Okay, today we are gonna practice comparing fractions. So go ahead and cut it out and glue it in, but we'll save the directions. Okay, comparing fractions. How can you tell which fraction is bigger and which is smaller? So we've already learned that fractions that look different can actually be equivalent, but they're not always equivalent. Sometimes one's bigger and sometimes one's smaller. And here are three strategies that will help you. So in the directions on part A, it says represent the fractions on the models and use your models to compare the fractions. So we're gonna represent three fifths and four sixths here. So the first thing is to do three fifths. That means we need to break this number line into five equal parts. So one, two, three, four, five. Now you're gonna wanna get these parts as close as you can. Okay, so sixths is gonna be, let's see, we'll do three on this side and we'll do three on this side. All right, so now we have sixths on the bottom and fifths on the top. So we're gonna shade three of the fifths. So one, two, three. And we're gonna shade four of the sixths. One, two, three, four. So by looking at it, can you tell which one is bigger? The one that takes up more of the whole is bigger. Now you can see why it's really important to get your parts as close to exact as you can. And sometimes you can get a ruler to help you if it's a little bit close. So this was almost too close to tell. Okay, so now let's look at another strategy. And so for B, we're going to create an equivalent fraction with a new denominator and then compare the numerators. So what does this mean? Now, do you remember when we talked about creating simpler fractions and harder fractions that are equivalent? Well, this is why we learned that. If we have two fractions that have the same denominator, then all we have to do is compare the numerator. So if we can make these have the same denominator, then it's easy to compare and we don't have to draw a picture. So if we're creating an equivalent fraction, we had five as a denominator and now we have 30. Well, what did we do to get from five to 30? Well, it's getting bigger, so we know we multiplied. What did we multiply by? Five times what is 30? Well, five times six is 30. Now remember our rule, whatever you choose to multiply by, you have to do for the numerator and the denominator. So since we multiplied by six, we have to multiply by six. Three times six is 18. So we've created an equivalent fraction. It's a harder fraction, but it still is equivalent and it's gonna help us compare with this one. So now let's do the same thing. We're gonna start with six and we're gonna create an equivalent fraction that has a denominator of 30. So six times what is 30? Six times five is 30. So what we do to the bottom, we gotta do to the top. So four times five is 20. So now we've created equivalent fractions. We have 18 out of 30 and we have 20 out of 30. 20 out of 30 is still four sixths and 18 out of 30 is still three fifths. They're just easier to compare now that they have the same number of parts. So since they have the same number of parts, Whatever the numerator is, is what tells us which fraction is bigger. So since 20 is bigger than 18, 4 6 is greater than 3 fifths. So creating equivalent fractions is something that you're gonna practice a lot because you're going to use this a lot as you work more and more with fractions. All right, let's look at one more strategy. This is the number line strategy. 
Notice that this number line has some solid lines, but it also has some dotted lines. And that's so we can show two different fractions on the same line. So the fifths are represented by the dotted line. So here is one fifth, here is two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and the end would be five fifths. And then the solid is the sixths. So here is one sixth, here is two sixths, here is three sixths, four sixths, and five sixths. Six six would be at the end. All right, so now that they're labeled, we can compare them. So let's find three fifths. So three fifths is right here. That's three fifths. Now let's find four sixths. Well, four sixths is right here. Which one is more? Well, four sixths is more because it's closer to over here, which is the one whole. So this is another strategy. So as you're doing your work and you have to compare fractions, remember there are three different ways you can do it. And you can figure out which way is your favorite. You can draw a picture. Just be really careful that you get your parts the same. You can find a common denominator, either a harder equivalent fraction or a simpler equivalent fraction. Or you can make two number lines and see where they fall on the number lines. I'll see you next time.